How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week five, and man, we have a little bit of an upgrade. I have gotten a new processor for my computer that is leaps and bounds better than the previous one. And conveniently, our PCS3 running college football revamped is a super processor heavy game. What that means is that things should run a little bit smoother. And from my testing, I haven't really heard any audio bugs. I know it's a big problem uh, and it causes a lot of people to play with the audio turned off, but I haven't heard any audio stuttering, which should hopefully make things a little bit more immersive and i've also upscaled the resolution from 1080p to 4k now because it is the emulator doing the upscaling and the game wasn't made for that it's not like the most obvious uh jump in quality but it does seem to me like it's a little bit sharper and it should help make the game look just that much newer with all that we have a big game against iowa they were ranked to start the season they're two and one which is unfortunate for us they just lost last week and they are a lower overall team than us which is incredibly rare i would say uh we haven't seen that much this season or really since we've moved to eastern uh they beat no that's us we beat ucf lost auburn beat clemson beat minnesota uh, man, when we started this season, it looked like it was going to be six straight ranked games, but Minnesota and Iowa kind of screwing that up for us. Iowa beat an FCS team, beat Iowa State, and then lost to a 2-1 Penn State. So I'm not really sure what to take from that, but they're obviously not a great team. Uh, the teams that they have been playing haven't been incredible either. Let's take a quick look before we do our recruiting. At the top 25 polls, always important, I think, because we're trying to get that push where we can be considered a playoff team. And for that, we're going to need a lot of chaos throughout the season. Top seven, still all undefeated. Auburn will play a number 21 Army on the road. And we know what Army does in NCAA 14, so there's definitely a chance for a big upset there. USC just beat Oregon by a field goal, and they will take on number 17 Cal at home. Other than that, for the top 10, it should be easy games, but you never know. Um, I think that's all our ranked matchups this week, so we will definitely be keeping an eye on those two. And I don't know, this early in the season, teams are ranked all over the place. I would expect at least one more upset. With our recruiting, the top lineman, it's still, it's not looking great. Uh, losing 45 a week to Texas, that should drop down, it seems like to me. Uh, bonus points wise, it should drop down to just 30. But they're getting close to being locked, so hopefully we can kind of cheese it where we uh, get locked out, unlock ourselves, and then have our visit, and it, like, catapults us into the lead. But I certainly am not going to feel confident about that, and I feel like once Texas uh, has their visit, it'll lock us out for good. Elliot Erdman losing 55 to Florida. It's a very similar situation there. I'm going to continue to give those guys points no matter what, though. We are still gaining with the 87 overall. Drew Allen, Dwayne Bell, we're losing 15 to Ohio State. I guess, uh, I think at the beginning, we thought we could sneak in there. They weren't giving them a lot of points, but they have gone gung-ho on that. So we will remove our points from Dwayne Bell, unfortunately, and just move them to somebody else. Um, Tymon Brooks, he'll get them for now. It looks like we could maybe make an impact in uh, Wake Forest lead, so we'll go for that. We don't need to go crazy on the kicker Cooper Gentry, but we can definitely offer him a scholarship this week. And that leaves us just with 150 points. And I'm not entirely sure where we could give it. Let's give it to the defensive tackle, Jalen Smith, and try to start getting him a little bit more locked while removing Oklahoma's lead. Drew Allen is ready to visit this week. He will join a bunch of other people, I think, potentially. We could send him to that Michigan game, but oh, how, how are we feeling? Is it worth sending him early? We are gaining 115 a week. Uh, week 11 and 12 for the other visits. That would put us in the lead. I don't know if we would be able to lock them out soon enough, though. Uh, but we're going to go for it. We'll send him to this Iowa game. Try and just get everybody else locked out before their visits happen. And we can see that actually makes it four people coming to visit now. Drew Allen, Travis Webb, Austin Ash, and Dane Clemens Valde. I'm definitely excited to see what we can do. We should expect to win this game. We've been winning this game uh, or this type of matchup all season long, including against better uh, opponents than us. So this is the one where we kind of need to make a statement. We can't play it like we did last week against Minnesota, where we let our foot off the gas and they ended up making it a two-score game and it got a little bit hairy. Uh, Hawkeyes are 77 overall. 
with a 79 offense and a 76 defense so they are in fact worse than us which is such a rarity uh it's like almost kind of weird for me um are all of their alternates uh kind of home alternates that's interesting let's let's find something that works out i do like the black pants over the gold pants for this matchup i don't know i just think they have a few interesting options but uh, it would be better if they were the home team uniform wise for us a lot of away games so far this season so we'll just go home alternate just throw on the silver caps and call it good and boy oh boy coming in we expect to do more our offensive ratings are actually pretty bad but defensively look at that 18th in points allowed which is mostly because of our late game uh putting in the second stringers but second in yards allowed and first in rushing yards allowed so we're allowing the teams to pass pretty well but we are absolutely dominating the run game although we're not running well ourselves almost last in the nation there um defensively they look mediocre offensively they may look mediocre we should be able to do something not going to focus on any of these uh recruiting goals but obviously any of them would be nice to have our top players still all on hot streaks theirs well, they've got a good left guard at 93 overall, but then they drop down into the mid 80s with a kicker and a punter. So that's good news for us on their depth. And again, we know just as a team, they are a lower overall than us. Man, it has been a little while since we've been to Ryan Earson too. Good to see the gray field again as we are home once again. They choose heads and we do lose the toss. Technically, I think our first loss on a kickoff yet this season. We're going to start with the football. RJ Rivera ready to go. And as they boot this one away, I'd like to ask you guys to scroll down and hit the like button. Help this video be seen by more and help support the channel in the process. It's a very mediocre return just to the 21 as we're going to look for a swing screen to RJ Rivera on this play. We'll see if the blocking can hold up. He's got the catch and hey, a first play screen going for 10 nine and a half maybe yards is more than acceptable here and the quicker we can get maurice worked up the bigger of a blowout this could potentially be we are looking for at the rpo i don't like the pass that actually probably wouldn't have been too bad but we hand it off to rj anyways and he goes up the middle for three and a first down and i might be just trying to push this a lot too early but we got maurice five wide looking to pass and oh i don't see anything be over the middle if we could get it there but it's inaccurate and yeah, that's just uh, me not giving Maurice enough time to get warmed up. That one will give us a second and 10 to work with. And Derek Bentley's in on this read option. And he's going to get the call up the middle. Plenty of space. Got some nice blocks. Kind of broke a tackle. Still not down. And by the time they call it dead, there's a flag on the play. This one's going to be a clipping. That's just because the play lasted so long. Real bummer. Coming back a long ways. Well, instead of a third and one, it's a second and 16 as we're going to have Chris Rutger come in motion on this triple option. Uh, oh, this could be good. I just... The riskiest pitch of all time, and we got absolutely bailed out. Should have been a fumble on the ground. I should have pitched it sooner, but I was feeling really greedy. And now I just don't think Maurice can do any other completion other than a slip screen. So that's what we're going to throw up. Give it to RJ and let RJ go to work. Oh, if 60 just has his head out of his ass, he gets the block there and it's a first down. I refuse to let that not work. And we're going to go for it on fourth down. This could be a terrible decision at the end of it, but Maurice, plenty of space, stupid pitch, and we're short. We're short of the line to gain. Maybe they gave it to us. Oh my gosh, we just got so lucky. Well, I don't really know what's going on, but I'm going to consider it a success because we still have the football. And we're still running the football. Derek Bentley weaving his way around the middle. He's got nine yards on that carry for his first. Well, we might as well just keep doing that. Let the two running backs do what they're best at, which is, believe it or not, a run. <laughs> not great blocking for RJ on that one. It gives us a third down. One thing's for certain, though. I'm not worried about these guys. We got RJ still in. We're going to run. Little zone run, and we find the space. And a little bit more. RJ Rivera breaking the tackle off to the races. 49 can't get him. And it was a little 49 on 49 action there as our number 49 goes 47 <laughs> into the end zone. I don't know what I'm saying. A lot of numbers being thrown out there. But the one that matters, it is now 7 to nothing midway through this first quarter that seemed like a busted play but could be a little bit of a heisman moment 
I feel like maybe I have to explain what I was even saying there, because I don't even... It took me a second. RJ Rivera's number is 49. The guy that was chasing after him, his number is 49. And it was a 47-yard run. Personally, I'm still a little bit lost after that one, but here we are. Oh, defense taking the field. Quarterback's going to scramble, and he'll slide down, almost picking up a first down. And I think I'm going to try and utilize that and stop this quarterback. I expect him to continue to run. Look at that. He tries to get out towards the edge. Nobody for him to pass to there, so you're able to just full send it. It's a sack for a loss of eight. Not sure if it was uh, Smith or Whitfield or who was getting the credit on that one, but you love to see it on this third down. It's going to be a pass. Quarterback getting pressured, and he throws it off his back foot. Almost got it to his man. But thankfully for us, it's just incomplete. That will bring the punt team out onto the field, and hopefully we can get some good field position out of that. Start of a shutout, maybe? We've been doing re really well in the first half the past few games. I'm not sure we can do much on this one. RJ, again, just can't quite escape their grasps on the return game. Maybe Derek Bentley can do something. Expecting him to? No, it's RJ Rivera still in, which is really surprising because typically with his stamina, he'd be out here. I got no words for that. That was a weird spin move, but it got five yards. Maybe uh, Maurice is ready to make a accurate throw. A kind of open. I threw that late. Safety comes up, swats it away. He saw that one coming from a mile away. And, well, we're one of two on third downs. This could be a risky option. Chris Rutger going to come in motion. Triple option. There's a lot of white jerseys on that part of the field. The blocking has been really good, though. The late pitch. Chris Rutger able to get the first down before four Hawkeyes players show up and obliterate him out of bounds. All that matters to me is that we are still on the field. Once again, a little RPO here. I'm going to throw this to Fontenot. And, oh, the blocking was not there. Maurice, two of six through the air to start. Thank goodness the running game has been as successful as it has been so far in this one because if we're not able to pass the ball, we are in trouble in general. You know, nothing good happens with that. And this is a really tough spot, third and twelve. I don't think that running a slip screen here would be successful, so we're going to try and see what Maurice can do. Probably look to scramble early. Y could be open. X could be open over the middle, and it's inaccurate. Way behind Fontenot, and it's 4th and 12, and unfortunately for us, I cannot, in good conscience, go for this on 4th down. So we're going to try and cough and corner these guys, give it all. We need a good bounce here. We didn't go to a good bounce, and he's actually going to field it off the bounce. Man, Dwayne Leonard putting his body on the line for the five-yard return just got obliterated. So what can we do here? Stopped him pretty easily the first time, it felt like, other than that one scramble. Good counter. Logan just got shoved off by the running back, and it gives up eight yards. If these guys figure out that they can run the ball successfully. We are going to be in trouble trying to rush five out towards the edge. Whitfield misses the diving tackle. A lot of space and blocks downfield for the Hawkeyes as Royal shoves James Johnson out of bounds after a 29-yard pickup. And I think that might be enough to put this quarterback into field goal range. We'll see what we can do. Kind of expecting more runs. Something off tackle. No, it's a little screen. Whitaker not able to get the tackle for loss but he slows him down enough for his allies to come to the rescue i think most importantly with that play we got these guys out of the hurry up even if it's just temporarily second and 13 got to expect something they get us to jump hodges in motion kind of worried quarterback scrambling man look out wide open i left his running back but it'll lose six yards and it'll be third and a mile and this third down is all about just making sure we don't give up the first. Maybe trying to keep them out of field goal range. Smith trying to get pressure. Quarterback scrambling. He gets hit the first time and he gets taken down at the line for the second one. End of the first quarter on that play. We're up 7-0. Feels like we're about to get the ball back, but we'll see if their kicker has one hell of a leg. Should they decide to try a field goal here? Well, honestly, I wish that they would have tried the field goal. Punt team out for the Hawkeyes to start this second quarter. And the kick is away. Could technically be fielded. I don't trust myself getting into position for that and not muffing it. So I guess we'll just take the touchback. And that's going to give us 80 yards to work with as I am set up for the mid-screen. I don't know if I feel confident throwing it. Actually, I do, but... Maurice missed him. Oh, he had so much space. If he caught that, 
It's a guaranteed 10 yards. That's brutal. Eight runs to eight passes. I don't know why if we've tried to pass the ball eight times, though, because obviously it's not working out. RJ trying to run away from the pressure in the backfield, does so successfully and gives us a manageable third and one. I was about to call another mid-screen, but I just can't trust Maurice right now. He is having one of those games where he's struggling early, and when he struggles early, he struggles often as Derek Bentley just follows the blocks beautifully, finds the crease. He gets 16 yards. That was some phenomenal timing and running on that triple option. So we'll try a little bit of a counter to RJ. Just got to take that north and again, just trying to outrun the pressure coming from behind. The running game working pretty spectacularly here. My eyes, there's no reason to go away from it here. RJ's doing a good job. Derek's doing a good job. The men up front are doing a phenomenal job. There's a great block. Tried a little step back cheese, but they tackle us only getting 13 yards. RJ has almost 100 on the day already, but it's Derek Bentley in on this read option. Kind of expecting Maurice to be able to keep it here. The blocking, not great. Step back works on the first guy, breaks a tackle, and then he kind of tackled the defender on that play, but it worked for Iowa. I have no idea what I just witnessed, but I, I guess it worked well for them. Second and 10, we'll hand it off to Derek Bentley. The blocking, good enough to get him towards the edge, cutting it back inside. He trucks the safety and gets six yards. So far, this has just been a pretty decimating drive for these guys. Let's put Fontenot on a little crossing route, but we're looking for Chris Rutger on the swing screen. See if it can be good. The blocking looks like it could be there. Chris Rutger, plenty of space. He's going to get the first down. Step back. Cheese working dramatically on three or maybe even four Hawkeyes there. And he's going to get 12 yards. So Maurice State gets a completion. Big news for us as we now have six first downs in the game. And we've got Archie Rivera just going north and kind of falling over the defenders. There was no chance he was making it work if we bounced it to the edge. So we'll definitely take what the defense gives us, and we're going to continue to do that. Robertson in motion. Four down linemen here trying to hand it off. RJ's getting some blocks, and oh, almost was able to spring his way free for a touchdown. Somehow he's still in. Honestly, I'm a little bit surprised. We're going to put Curtis or maybe Stone in motion. Not exactly what I meant to do, but I think it works out well because now the blocking almost better. Duh. It might have worked better if Stone wasn't over there blocking, but it's a first and goal nonetheless. That play actually was enough to get RJ to 101 rushing yards so far on like 11 carries in the first half. Make it carry number 12 is... Ooh. He got a yard there, but just took a big shot falling backwards. Man, I'm going to be stubborn and just continue to bash my head against this wall until we get into the end zone. I'm surprised not to see Derek Bentley because I think he would have done a good job there. RJ got us another yard closer, but it's not quite enough. And I said, bashing our head against the wall. That's what we're going to try to do as it's another halfback dive up the middle. And this time he gets in for his second touchdown of the day. Really had to fight for that one after the first one kind of was a gift. It's going to make it a two score game. So 14 nothing, a minute and 47 left in the half. And six timeouts available for both sides. Oh, Napoleon, great job gunning down there. Got to refrain from saying something stupid in broken French here. And here's, I think, where we're going to try and just continue to bring pressure. See what we can do. We want the ball back. I would love a 21 nothing lead because they get the ball to start the third quarter. We had somebody there. Thank goodness there's a flag. Please be against them. Clipping. I think they might still get a first down here, but we will take that for sure. First and 14. No, that must have been a ways back. I was expecting that to be one of those clippings where, uh, like, the wide receiver down blocking gets called for it, but it was the running back in the backfield. So first and 14 is they will step back to throw, and Logan's getting absolutely torched on a corner route. Nothing that he could do there. That is probably the most deadly route for our defense. You always hate to see it. I think it's just uh, way too easy. Either we defend the corner route and the crossing route's wide open like it is right now, or we defend the crossing route and the corner route's wide open. Our linebacker's just not quite fast enough. Regardless, it puts us in a decent spot on this one. Second and nine. We're going to try and bring some pressure, expecting them to go to the air. Quarterback gets the pass off. Whitaker with a greatly timed tackle. Only gives up six yards. That could have been a lot worse. We've got these guys now in a third and four. 
So we'll see. Expecting the pass. Trying to get pressure. Quarterback feeling it. Oh, my gosh. Jackson wide open. He just barely got over the line, honestly. But uh, there was no coverage anywhere near him. Pressure de definitely not doing anything to slow these guys down at the moment. So I'm not going to worry about it. Crossing route wide open. Another curl route wide open. That's Gary Curry. 15 yards as Iowa's starting to push right now with a minute left. And this is probably a terrible idea, but we are bringing pressure on this one. Whitaker trying to do something, but it's a slip screen. Super late to react to it. Good tackle. Pushes him out of bounds. Just again, saving what could have been a whole lot more. Just in general, though, this hasn't been working. We know they're passing a ton, so we're actually going to switch things up and come out in the dime. Try to get a little bit more speed on the field. See what that gives us. Avery Binkley trying to guard this... Uh, Running back, but quarterback went outside the pocket and gets sacked for the third time this game. This might have been the right adjustment to make. Typically, our 4 2 5, we don't have to worry about it as much, but it's a struggle. Quarterback getting pressured. This is going to be a pass interference of some sort, I feel like. Pass interference. Oh, against them. Thank goodness. We can decline that. Get the fourth and 10. Kind of a weird screen that didn't work out for them. Maybe it was an RPO. I'm not sure. What we do know is that they are going to have to put this one away. 51 seconds, three timeouts, because thankfully they were taking them for us. And, ooh, not a returnable ball. Let that one bounce into the end zone as well. And this is going to be an interesting drive. We have not passed the ball well to save our lives, but we've run it tremendously well. So let's combine the two. We're going with, like, kind of a swing screen to RJ Rivera, who has some blockers downfield. 29, just able to stop that one from going the distance. We got to go in the hurry up here. RJ, maybe next year we'll have the speed to take those the distance. 38 seconds. Tate snaps it, rolls outside the pocket. Plenty of space to work with. Right bumper could have been open. Y could have been open, but... I just don't trust him to make that throw right now. So we scramble for a first down. That play able to stop the clock is we're actually going to come out and run a read option, expecting to take a timeout if we don't get the first down or get out of bounds. But RJ Rivera picks up the first down and stops the clock anyways. He's having himself a good game. And this is probably just a throwaway pass. A could be open. Stone comes down with it inside the 10 in the 5 and he's into the end zone with 20 seconds left in the half. Not sure how Maurice actually managed to throw that ball accurately but a great separation and just the extra drive to fight that last couple of yards into the end zone. It's going to be 21-0. You know, this might be seen as a stupid decision but I want these guys to think that they can go for it so that they risk throwing like an interception or something because it just feels like we're almost there. And with 17 seconds in a timeout, they're going to be looking for the end zone. I say that, and at least I hope they'll be looking towards the end zone because when you're down three scores against the number 15 team in the country, you probably need to be looking for that. This one's thrown and almost intercepted by Avery Binkley. Got his hands in there at least to break it up. And if the guy catches that one, honestly, that could have been a touchdown. So happy with the result. 12 seconds now as they do step back to throw again. And, oh, I got burned, but the quarterback gets sacked and we will take a timeout on third and 18. That's already the second sack of the game for Clinton Whitfield. These guys are one of four on their third downs. Can we get the stop? Back the coverage off. Don't need to get burned early. It's a curl route. Good tackle for Moore and we'll take the timeout with four seconds left. This is actually really interesting. They decided not to kick the the punt. Probably didn't want to have RJ have a chance to return one for a touchdown, but definitely an interesting scenario. And we get the sack anyways. So uh, the defense comes out and now looks incredible because of that. Uh, just absolutely stat padding. Interesting decision. But I guess if I was in Iowa's shoes, I would absolutely just try to throw up a Hail Mary there as well. 21-0 as we head into the locker rooms, and it's feeling real good. Defense is playing well. We're not passing the ball tremendously well, but we do have a nice passing touchdown. It's the running game from RJ Rivera that's the story today. I think he's got like 15 carries or something like that. Uh, three touchdowns or two touchdowns and well over 100 yards, and we're going to expect him to keep going. Not putting in the second string at all today. We're going to keep our foot on the gas and just look for the biggest blowout that we can get. So the defense came out looking really, really good to end the second or the, the second quarter. Uh, I almost said the second half. 
can they come out to start the second half really good is the real question. As this is a ooh, almost a scary good return for Dwayne Leonard. I think our run defense has been good enough so far in this game that we can probably keep the dime package going for now as they go over the middle. Avery Binkley just got beat off the line on the quick crossing route. That's a freshman mistake. Hopefully we don't see that too much. Second and one. Definitely could see a run here. They go play action first down and on second down. It's the quarterback scrambling for his life. Plenty of space. Plenty of gray in front of him trying to strip the ball, but he's got a good handle on it. Puts him to midfield. The funny thing is that even with that big carry, he's averaging negative yards on his rushes from how many times he's been sacked. This one is a dropped pass. Binkley covered it pretty well. And this has just been an interesting game. That's as much as I can say. A screen over the middle. Curry grabs it but loses a yard. Might have just put them on the good side of the 50 for us. Don't know if running those screens is going to work while we're in this man coverage. Definitely going to be difficult to have work. Going to back everybody off, expecting a curl route as it's over the middle. Ron Johnson gets burned, but he tentatively gets the stop. It's fourth and two. I expect him to go for it here. It's the uh, pump formation, but there is no chance that I trust that these guys don't go for it in this spot. And no, oh, they're actually going to kick it away. So we will take the touchback happily. I, I think I go for it if I'm Iowa there. Down 21, you don't want to give us the ball again. Maybe I should be considering that good news for us because that means we can pad RJ's running stats in this game. He breaks a tackle, can't quite break the second one. He had a lot of space and some good blocks to the left there. Gives us a second and 11 to work with. Don't feel super confident, but I don't feel, you know, bad about this either, especially, oh my gosh, Maurice Tate. Plenty of space on the read option keeper. You love to see that. Why does it feel like this has just been kind of carbon copy of uh, so many games this season? Shutting these guys out, dominating early. Can we finish it all off? RJ Rivera, an 18-yard carry there. Puts him at 131 yards on the day. That's absurd. The crazy thing is we have no reason not to just continue to run the football. They can't stop us. Our offensive line is absolutely feasting. I mean, even when they do get a good play like that, we still got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe I'm just feeling more confident than I should, but I'm certainly enjoying it. Looking at an RPO here, uh, we're going with the run. Derek Bentley had some space to work with, only got two yards. I think that probably should have been a couple more. Unfortunately, that's just bad running from me. Robertson in as the handoff man on this third down at triple option attempt, but they're not going to let RJ get the ball, so Maurice, plenty of space to run. Slides down. The last thing we need is him getting injured. And I've called a play, but I'm fairly certain it's not going to work. Stone is going to get caught up on Maurice Tate on this triple option. Um, yeah, and it causes problems. But Maurice, as long as they don't go after him, it works out great. Well, let's go to one that's kind of worked, but also hasn't. Uh, toss plays 50-50 on whether or not we lose a ton of yards or, hey, just get one. We'll take that, showing him a different look, making the defense think a little bit more. And on this third down, you know, it's been a while since we've seen RJ, but he's coming in for this one. Can he get the conversion? Defense, great job getting off the line. Our offensive line just got obliterated. It's a loss of two. We're going to go for this, though. Real question is, what can we hope for from these guys? There's a lot of space for RJ if he can get to the edge. Blocking is good enough to just barely do that. And once again, the drive stays alive. This is definitely a morale-killing drive if you're Iowa. This was kind of their defense's last chance to make a stand. And it's not going well so far. They could still stop us. But even if they do that, we've taken so much time off the clock, it's looking really good. And to me, this is the kind of play that could put the nail in the coffin. Stepping back, Chris Rucker wide open. I threw that maybe a little bit late. I just need to make sure he was as open as I thought. Got a good six yards. And now on this third and inches, trying to get our eighth first down conversion of the day. Maurice is going to keep it. The blocking is really good. It's a first and goal. He's still on his feet. Oh, I was trying to go for the touchdown. Let him take a couple of shots, and it's a first and goal. Can RJ now get his third rushing touchdown of the day? I think he deserves it. It's the biggest gap he's seen all day. And he can waltz his way into the end zone as we're going to make this 28 to nothing at the end of the third. 
So at this point, this is where this game differs from every other game we've seen so far this season. We are not letting off the gas. We are not trying to burn the clock. We are going to try to score as much as we can. Obviously while being safe, but still bringing as much pressure on defense as we can as well. None of the teams that we've played have led up at this stage. So the last thing I want is for them to just continue that as Logan is there to stop the slip screen in the backfield. This quarterback is 11 of 15 through the air as our third quarter actually comes to a close. But he's just not able to get a whole lot. Uh, meanwhile, our quarterback, not great through the air. has done a little bit, but it's the running game. Absolutely decimating these guys. One quarter to play. Let's see if we can finally finish a shutout. You know, that would have been a pretty cool line if my voice didn't crack in the middle of it. Voice crack king, undefeated. <laughs> Second and 13. Expecting them to pass, and they do step back. Quarterback's going to scramble. Avery Binkley slowing him down, and he'll slide down out of bounds to give them a third long. That's exactly what we're looking for. Anything we can do to slow these guys down has worked fantastically so far. I wouldn't be surprised if they run another screen. And over the middle, it's Ron Johnson. Oh, almost able to jump in front of that pass. That was actually really good coverage from him to force the fourth and a mile. And it's RJ Rivera back, maybe for some all-purpose yards on this kick return. As they will put it away. And this one is shanked out of bounds. I got it decently far downfield, all things considered. Iowa now, after three quarters and some change, has just over 100 yards of offense. Meanwhile, we're sitting at 331 and adding to that every second that RJ is onto the field. Rivera alone, over 150 yards and uh, three touchdowns. Let's try a little play action. Look at to throw it deep on this one. Oh, uh, yeah, that's not going to go well. Tate still on his feet. So, uh, <laughs> what just happened there? There is absolutely zero reason that shouldn't have been a 10 plus yard sack. And yay, yeah, here we are as we're, well, I don't want to run the exact same play. I don't think that works. I don't want to run this play either. I don't, I don't want to run any of these plays. Can we just run a four verts, please? <laughs> Uh, I think that this could work really well. It looks like they want to bring a lot of pressure. If somebody can get off the line early, that'll work fantastically. Pressure coming, giving it to RJ. He stays in bounds, breaks a tackle, stays on his feet and steps out after seven. Oh, if he could have caught that moving forward, that could have been huge. That pressure was coming to Maurice immediately. We didn't have another option other than to just throw it away immediately. Thankfully, it worked. And thankfully, the blocking has just been so good. Guess this is just kind of what happens when you finally play a team that is a lower overall than you. You just have so many opportunities to pick up yards as Bentley puts a beautiful little juke move on the safety and gets his own first down. You know, Derek only has eight carries, but he has 50 yards on the ground. So even he is contributing in a major way as RJ, if 58 gets blocked, I think that could be a touchdown. But unfortunately, the linebacker snuck through. Not what you want to see, but it is what it is as we will try a little slip screen. I just, you know, it's kind of a way to run or for me just to fall asleep at the wheel and just get up. Like, what are you doing? How do you get sacked on a slip screen, goon? Honestly, kind of embarrassing. Third and 17. We got to pass this, right? We're going to, we're going to look to throw nobody good really here but we have rj rivera who can go on that wheel route so who knows maybe just maybe he'll be open the pressure not really coming early although there it is late just heaving it up into the end zone rj rivera comes down with it and he scores 22 yards into the end zone 54 was there somehow maurice throws a perfect ball and he gets his feet in bounds they're not gonna take a look at it so rj finds the end zone for the fourth time this game as we make it a 35 to nothing ball game 343 left. This is just not going the way of the Hawkeyes. So Clark can boot that one away. This one makes it to the goal line, which is good news. As RJ was there making first contact on the kickoff. All right. Well, here we go. Another slip screen. Can we get there? That was a thing of beauty. Oh, man. No chance to get the interception, but we were there to hit him immediately. That's a loss of six. 
We're going to change things up. Go in the zone a little bit on this play. See if we can just confuse the defense. Smith getting good pressure, hitting the quarterback. And it's Avery Binkley there to knock it down. Would have loved to turn over a sack there, but we'll take it. This is just one of those games where I think that even though there's a one overall difference between both of our teams, it feels like we way outmatch them in talent. And Webb sheds one sack, gets hit with the second. They are now less than 100 yards of total offense as it's fourth and 22. It's the punt formation out once again. Jody Gentry back to return on this one. They're going to be punting it from their own end zone. Good chance for Jody to get something. Good pancake out there at the edge. And he's going to have a chance if he can get the corner. Makes one guy miss. Kicker just knocks him out of bounds, but it's a 40-yard return. Man, this has been finally the game we're looking for. I guess we could probably burn the clock to completion here, but I can't do it. Man, that was a mid-screen. There was no way I was going to throw that to the running back. That would not have worked. I think the whoever B was out on the right side on their curl route might have been open. But again, I just I don't know if I can trust that in a spot like that. Um, you know, Maurice has made a couple of nice throws today, but not enough for me to feel confident. Very quickly, that does bring up a third and seven. Bentley's still in. I'm kind of looking at Jody Gentry here. Just at the goal line, stepping back. He's got the separation and a great throw. Gentry set up the drive with a great punt return and gets paid off with a touchdown with two minutes and seven seconds left. Really just need the defense to make one more stop at this point. And again, I am refusing to... Uh, Put in the second stringers. It's not worth it. Good tackle from Napoleon there. I think the funniest thing for me about Napoleon is that that's pretty much all he does. He just guns down and hits somebody really hard. It's like somebody told him what American football was, and that's his only, like, reference as to what he's supposed to do. It's working out, though. Logan, good job. Decent user for me, which is a little bit surprising to stop the scramble at the line. We don't get torched. Oh, that's going to be a big counter. Nothing that I can do there. Overcommitted. And the run goes for 10. Now, the thing is, I don't know whether to trust that these guys are going to run the football now or what the deal is. Third and inches? No, they will step back. Looking, looking. Webb over the middle has his man open. It's Gary Curry. Binkley can't get the tackle, but it is Whitaker there. To save the touchdown, I might be taking a timeout here in a second. If they get another decent play... The last thing we want to do is give up the shutout on the final drive from these guys. Quarterback hit as he's throwing. Unfortunately, it just hits the turf. That one actually is going to allow us to not take the timeout because they got out of the hurry up. I'm bringing Smith in pressure here. Try to get back to this QB. See if we can hit him, and we do hit him as he's throwing. Lewis knocks Dwayne Leonard out of bounds for a loss of two. And again, we're looking for something in fact i'm taking a timeout i think this is a big spot take the timeout let your guys get a little bit of a breather and that's gonna secure us having like all our starters in on this play smith trying to get pressure webb throws it over the middle caught short of the line again it's fourth and inches we're still alive here oh man 55 seconds as this clock is burning i could see this being a run to johnson putting a man in motion stepping back all the time in the world for the quarterback throws it and the man dropped it for the turnover on downs logan was kind of in the area there was almost no chance he would have made the tackle to stop the first down though so we get the ball with 45 seconds and we're not going to run out this clock we're going to run but we're looking to score for sure this is for all the teams that have done us wrong in the past couple of weeks. Trying to get our revenge. I got nothing there. X? <laughs> I should have thrown that one away. That was all too risky. I wouldn't be surprised if Iowa took a timeout if we don't convert here on third down. We're going to hand it off to uh, Derek Bentley. I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, gosh. Uh, I certainly don't feel good. No timeout taken. Oh, no. Bentley's hurt. Well, see, that's why you... Uh, don't put in this, or that's why you do put in the second string. Literally the last play of the game, because there's no reason for us to punt this one away. We can let the clock expire. Hopefully it's not a bad injury, but it's going to be a little bit before we find out. Clock comes to a close and we have finally done it against a team with a now 500 record. 
I mean, sure, they are lower overall than us, which is pretty bad. But we completed a shutout. We just didn't let off the gas. Did If we would have had our second string defense in on that last drive, 100% they'd score a touchdown. But keep the first stringers in. We get the job done. That's going to be a big morale booster for the season. And, man, RJ Rivera has to be player of the game. Absolutely dominated today. Some big plays all over the field. And he is the major factor in us winning this one 42 to nothing. Man, that was phenomenal. It feels really good to finally get the shutout. We did a really good job at, in the both the second and the fourth quarters of just, you know, making sure that we didn't allow them to score. We did allow them to score over or, or rush or gain. Gosh, that would be the word. Gain over 100 yards of offense, 37 on the ground, 104 through the air. Both of those are going to help tremendously with our defensive statistics. Man, we ran for 270 as a team. That is something else. Just dominated them. Players of the game, one of them is the reason why. 163 yards for RJ Rivera on 24 carries and three touchdowns. And then he had a receiving touchdown and 74 receiving yards as well. George Smith continuing to add to his sack totals for the year. Gets two more. It's phenomenal. It's as simple as that. So four in one is what we improve to as we will go ahead and just advance to the next week where we finally get a little bit of a breather and a bye. But it's before we play the number one team in the country in Michigan and the Wolverines look really, really scary this year. Going to be really curious to see if we actually got any commits after uh, that week. I kind of forget that we had four, five guys visiting. And we do get 77 overall right tackle uh, Austin Ash and 76 overall left guard Travis Webb. So that's some nice offensive line depth to have. And uh, we do have Kendall Malone going to Purdue. Drew Allen visits. That's good. Uh, the question is now, what are we going to be ranked? Do we move up? We go up two spots. So number 13 nearing that top 10 mark. I know that we had that one uh, upset. Did we have any others? Uh, Michigan beat down on Illinois. Auburn beat down on Army, which is the same. USC was able to beat Cal. This week we have, oh my gosh, so many ranked matchups. One plays 19, two plays 8, four plays 15, six plays 21, seven plays 22, 10 plays 17, 11 plays 14. That's crazy. Meanwhile, we get to sit here on a bye. LSU was the one team that I was thinking of that lost, but joining them is number seven, Nebraska, getting their first loss of the season. Cal takes their second, uh, Army takes their second, and FIU, UCF, and West Virginia all drop out. But this is going to be a potentially really crazy week for the top 25, and we get the benefit of just being able to sit on the sidelines. So certainly not going to be upset with that one. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and then head down to the comments to let me know if you thought we were going to choke that. We have been in a position to have shutouts for multiple weeks this season, and we haven't been able to complete the job. Uh, are you impressed or are you surprised that we were able to do it today? Once you've done all that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.